watching the News Channel 15 Highlight Zone with Glenn Marini. There's just certain weeks that you got to get up. Win, 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 win. That's all I can think about. We we're really explosive. We didn't really skip a beat from last year. Good enough team to capitalize on anything we do. We understand that it's our chance to go get it now, and the whole team know that, and we're we going to keep fighting. Our offense has been lights out. I would just say explosive. If there's ever a group of, of uh, kids in this conference that you know, has a reason to believe they can beat Homestead, it's, it's, it's uh, East Noble. If there were ever a need for Bobby Boucher and his I call it the H2O. Tonight will be the night for the water boy. It's week three of the high school football season, along with the sweltering weather, conference races heating up. In the NHC, that meant kicking off the conference schedule with some scorching offensive, offensive play, I should say. East Noble at Homestead, and it's where our man Joe Whalen spent the evening, and he joins us now with more. Joe? Glenn, I could have used some of that water earlier tonight. You know, while it's only the first night of NHC play, history says this one carries some weight. In the last 14 years, either Homestead or East Noble has won at least a share of the conference title 13 times. Conference title implications, East Noble at Homestead. It's your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Both teams coming in 2-0. Homestead scoring 58 points tonight. The Knights putting up 44. First quarter, Spartans running the option and running it well. The pitch goes to Frank Martin, and the senior houses this one. 64 yards to open the scoring. That made it 7-0. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to do some push-ups. Later in the quarter, Homestead goes to the air. Matt Skronik up top to Isaac Griffith. These two would see a lot of each other tonight. It's 14-0 at that point. More push-ups in the second out. The Knights answer. Nick Weimer, Gray Fox, they've done this a few times this season. That made it 14-7. It was a 21-7 Sparty lead at recess. In the third quarter, that's where the difference was tonight. Griffith on the slant, and then check this out. Ridiculous moves on the open field. They call that the Spartan shuffle, making people miss left and right when it's all said and done. Finally takes it in for six. Griffith, 171 yards and three scores tonight. They were flipping for grip out at Homestead. East Noble, one more time. It's Brandon Marble, 29 yards, cuts it to a 30 to 14 game, but Homestead on fire tonight. Skronik on the bootleg, finds the big fella, Zach Swartz, as the Spartans score 37 points in the third quarter on their way to a convincing 65 to 21 win. I think this is a big statement for us uh, on both sides of the ball. I think we did a great job uh, coming back in the second half and doing what we could do uh, offensively and defensively. I mean, we struggled in the first half with the penalties and everything, but we toned that down and really focused in the second half and did what, did what we could in the second half. It really was a, two, a tale of two halves. Uh, we came back in the second half. I don't think we had an incompletion, so uh, it was a complete team effort. You know, uh, We just came out and we put it on in the second half. It's a nice win against a quality opponent that was 2-0, you know, so we feel very good about that. We were very... Um, did a lot of study that caused us a lot of sleepless nights, you know, coming up to this thing. So I don't know what to say. We're just trying to get better each week. Next week, Homestead travels to Columbia City. East Noble is at home against DeKalb. Glenn took them a little while to get going, but once they do, watch out for Sparty. All right, thanks very much, Joe. Let's stick in that conference in the NHC. Carroll 2 0 after wins against Goshen and Delta Norwell 0 2 after losses to Leo and Heritage. First quarter action, Robbie Ritter unfortunately fumbles for the Knights and Carroll recovers on the 12 yard line. They take advantage because the next play, Jimmy Crumley, this kid is determined. We talked to him in the preseason. He takes it into the house. Seven zip Carroll at that point. And uh, after a Carroll interception, how about Crumley again? He takes it down to the three yard line on this rush. And you know what? It would set up his quarterback to do some big things. Chris Terry had five touchdown passes and this one drew tranquil on the receiving end there. And this one, a big Carroll victory. Chargers now 3-0, 56-7 the final there. At Columbia City, the Eagles hosting a Belmont team ranked 10th in this week's 3A state poll. Randy Hudges firing up the squad. First quarter, Belmont striking first, Jacob Bergman Dumps it off to Brad Bussey, who was huge last week against South Adams. He's huge right here. 43-yard touchdown. Braves take a 7-zip lead. Columbia City defense, though, they would respond. Bussey, unfortunately, puts it on the turf in the Eagles. T.J. Smith is Johnny on the spot. He recovers. 
Columbia City capitalizing. Adam Neely in 22 carries, 237 yards, three touchdowns for him, but he was carted off with an injury in the fourth. Braves would take the lead here in the second quarter on a 31-yard field goal by Chase Ellsworth, but it's the Eagles coming back to win it. Max Gandy, the final in this one at 24-13 over Belmont. Final stop in the NHC, DeKalb hosting New Haven. Barron snapped a 22-game losing streak last week by beating Garrett, but you know what? DeKalb having some uh, recovering the fumble right there. It was New Haven's Brandon Fluker. And then how about this? New Haven with a nice 32-yard run. The Bulldogs can do some damage on the ground. That's Javin Easterly with the pickup right there. And it's Tabor Jordan. For New Haven, you saw him drop it, picks it up, gets in from one yard out. Anthony Moore had 160 yards rushing and a couple of TDs as New Haven wins big, 47-7. to well, switching now to the SAC, last year Northside played the role of streak snapper. The Redskins beat Bishop Dwanger 26-16 in week three. That ended Dwanger's amazing 38-game winning streak in conference play. The Skins putting up over 50 a game. The Saints ranked second in 4A. We pick it up in the first quarter. Northside football, C.J. Jackson sacked. Looked like he might have been down. No whistle blown. You got to play to the whistle. And Gus Pelkington takes it 60 yards back for a score. And you know what, Ryan Hall, he wasn't happy about that 7-zip Bishop Dwinger. Fast forward now to the fourth. Redskins up 12-7. C.J. Jackson to DeMond Gaston for a touchdown. It's 18-7 Northside. Saints trying to battle back. How about Gabriel Espinoza with a great catch right there. Cuts it to 18-13, but C.J. Jackson, the senior quarterback, would take this team on his back. And you know what? Keeps it for a touchdown right there on fourth and three. And Northside wins this one over the Saints for the second year in a row, 26-13. We just have to correct our mistakes first. We knew if we corrected our mistakes, how great our team is, they wouldn't score. So once we did that and no one got down on each other, we just we knew what we did wrong, we fixed it, and we started clicking. Yeah, our defensive staff came up with just an excellent game plan. I got to give credit to Coach Newman, uh, Coach Easley, Coach Cavanaugh. Our defensive game plan was awesome. Then you give credit to our kids who executed the uh, defensive game plan. Our job was to contain Moon and not let Watercutter get deep on us. So I think we did a pretty good job tonight. Northside's at Wayne next week, Dwanger at Northrop. Speaking of Northrop, the Bruins almost beat Lures last week. Tonight in for a battle at Spooler Stadium against Snyder. That was Weston Painter getting cooled off second quarter, third and long. Northrop's Josh Stein picks up a first for the Bruins, but you know what? Snyder's defense was salty. Later on that drive, it's Jalen McIntosh with a diving interception, and that would set up this ensuing drive. Brandon Phelps, the reigning highlight zone player of the week from the SAC to Shaquan Scott. Smooth as Teddy Pendergrass. He gets into the end zone for a touchdown there. 35-7, Snyder at the half, and the Panthers go on to win this one big over their rival, 48-14. Over at Lures, the clash at Calhoun Street is Southside taking on Lures. Knights ended up forfeiting this one last year, their only loss. And Jalen Smith in the first quarter with a 10-yard run. We've been waiting for it to explode this year. He gets the touchdown right there, 7-zip Lures. Southside's Aaron Thomas doing business. He blocks the punt, and you know what? He's going to do it all himself. Returns it for a 39-yard touchdown, but the PAT no good. That makes it 7-6. Lures still in the league. You know Coach Lindsey's not going to like that in the film room this weekend. Tyvel Jemison, one of the top cornerbacks in the state. Watch him pick it near the goal line. Great defensive play for Lures, and Sean Caton for Lures. Boots the 22-yard field goal there. It was 10-6 at that point, and Lures goes on to win this one by a final of 31 to six. At Wayne, General snapped a 13-game losing streak last week by beating South Bend Riley. Wayne hosting Concordia. Just under two minutes left in the second quarter. Uh, second quarter, Concordia fumbles right there, and Wayne recovers. And you know what? Robert Brown has taught those guys to take advantage of the opportunities. They do just that. Marion Rogers Fincher, three names and six points. 23-14 cadets in the second. 20 seconds left in the second quarter. That's Nick Harmeyer with a 47-yard field goal. A lot of kicker love so far. 23-17, though, cadets at the half. Second half, this is David Morrison. He would throw three touchdown passes in this game, including one to Jacob Bickle right there. Mark Rogers caught the other two TD passes as Concordia wins over the Generals 40-17. Well, we've hit up the SAC and we've broken down the NHC, but coming up, we're going to make a trip to Magic Wand Country to see the three-time defending NECC champs in Churubusco. Plus, 
We're going to hit up every game in the ACAC, and that means Heritage at Woodland, Bluffton at South Adams, and Adams Central. Had a very tough Leo squad, and don't forget Garrett out of conference against Wet Snowball. All those games and much, much more coming up on the Highlight Zone. What the Bishop Dwyer Saints? And you are